Royal Air Force Cinema Corporation presents your own Astra Gazette. First stop, the South Sea Islands. To relax in the romantic sun-drenched setting we're always dreaming about. Unfortunately, dreaming is as far as we get. For this scene is no farther west from London than Hounslow. And although the atmosphere is realistic enough, it's merely the setting for Europe's most unusual barbershop. Serviced entirely by lovely young girls in Hawaiian costume, the shop is an attempt to get away from the dull and unattractive interior of the average barbershop that a man suffers in silence. Nor is it merely a stunt. This girl, for example, 18-year-old Yvonne Wright, is a trained hairdresser. One snag about this place is that you might go in for just a short back and sides, but once you're in the chair, you feel there's no point in hurrying. In fact, you might just as well wait for a manicure and a shampoo and even a perm. In case some customers feel a little shy with all these girls, proprietor Leonard Pountney stays behind the bar. Although the shop is so like an island paradise, it's surprising these bottles of beer are not for the customers. Well, they are, but not for drinking. The idea of a beer rinse is copied from women's hairdressing, but if this customer is anything to go by, they should catch on for men too. Although the experiment seems to be a successful one, we doubt whether other barbers will copy the idea. Yet it's an interesting possibility to say the least. For example, if they had this system at camps, the expression, get your hair cut, would disappear from the flight sergeant's vocabulary. Still, what a thought. Have you ever seen a pink elephant? Well, for those of you who haven't, let's introduce a place where you can see even stranger things, without the benefit of having one over the eight. For this is Britain's craziest pub, the unique, in every sense, inn at Hunsdon, Hertfordshire. A goonland cross between country inn, antique shop, and natural history museum. Something to put an end to all those tall fishing stories, a 200 weight catch. A typical relic in this little world of fantasy created by proprietor Burley Dixon from a huge collection of completely incongruous knick-knacks from all over the world, many supplied by customers. Half the time, visitors don't know whether what they're seeing is real or whether their eyes are playing tricks. You might almost believe you'd seen a couple of guinea pigs in the cheese dish, for example. By some strange coincidence, Mr. Dixon was formerly a poison gas specialist in the services, so he's well prepared for some of the more dangerous jobs behind the bar. The inn, by the way, was built in 1941 as a temporary replacement for the original pub, which was demolished to make way for an airfield and was used by RAF men as an unofficial mess. Today, the signatures of some of our greatest fighter pilots grace this wall. Incidentally, the counter comes from the original inn and is over 200 years old, in contrast to some of the seats which were obtained quite recently from a crashed airliner. The scratching post, however, is their own invention.
visitors are reminded that cameras are not allowed inside. So entering into the spirit of the crazy atmosphere, we pretended to be invisible and nobody spotted us. Which, when you see the scenery helping itself to a quick one, is not as surprising as you might think. An unusual hobby for women, with even more interest to men in both senses, is weight training. And at a gymnasium in Earls Court, London, practicing what she preaches, is the lovely owner, better known if you haven't already recognized her, as film and singing star Jill Day. Jill's been training with weights for several years, although she's still glad of advice from partner and trainer Rusty Hood, a former PTI in the Australian Navy. This form of exercise is becoming increasingly popular with women, either to lose weight, put it on, or merely to keep fit. Naturally, the gym is run for men too, and many film and stage stars, like Canadian actor Lee Patterson, get their muscles here. This two hands curl, by the way, with 70 pounds on the bar, is for the biceps. Another actor, Robert Brown, includes in his schedule sets of deep knee bends, a tough exercise for legs, chest and lungs. Other resident weightlifters are muscle men James Laurie, a former Mr. East Scotland, and South African Johnny Isaacs, a runner-up in the Mr. Universe competition. There's no slacking off here, for with Jill to inspire them, this is one gym that can guarantee results. The oft-repeated lines shot by mustachioed and rapidly boarding pilots of World War II frequently tend to bore the younger generation to distraction. But this is one nostalgic visit to which nobody could possibly be bored. For these present-day windmill girls are renewing a wartime association with the RAF at Biggin Hill. During the war, the windmill girls frequently gave shows at the station in their free time. And the RAF, never to be outdone in matters of hospitality, would reciprocate by visiting the windmill and throwing a party after the show. To commemorate Battle of Britain Week, the station commander, Wing Commander Andrews, DFC, renewed this wartime custom and invited the girls to a preview of the station's celebrations. Among the static exhibits are model rockets made from scrap material on the station itself. They're given a warm-up to ensure that there'll be no slip-up at the actual firing. Eighteen-year-old Christine Fraser autographs her first rocket, from one real scorcher to another. But even a glamorous signature won't soften the blow for whoever it lands on. A special feature which requires all the precision of high-skilled dancers is a flying display by three chipmunks, firmly taped together. The flight is led by Wing Commander Neil Cameron, DSO DFC, a Battle of Britain pilot, now commanding officer of the London University Air Squadron. The trainer planes are very different from the hurricanes and spitfires that used to perform so gallantly in the skies above Biggin Hill. Sometimes, when the windmill troop were there, they would find that half their audience suddenly called aloft to deal with intruders. Sheila Van Dam casts an approving professional eye skywards. Even more secure than the link between the planes is the link between Biggin Hill and the windmill which has survived both war and time. <laughs> 